I have a question that may be two times on the same fork. So it's ways that we go to other countries into responding to our aggressive behavior. So the first is a, oh, just a second, start my video. Um, the first is a Newsweek article from a month ago. And it's talking about a secret undercover army of about 6,000 people. It's something called Signature Reduction. And so that's the first thing. It, it kind of seems like a new state behind network. It's talking about guys in NSA and special ops and all these different organizations that are using the division of the Pentagon to reduce their footprint, either their um, physical or online presence. So it's a program that's been referred to as signature reduction. And my second question, it may be the same kind of thing, but it, it concerns the National Endowment for Democracy. And apparently part of them, uh, part of their operations are dedicated to permanent regime change or preparing people to have their countries overthrown, if I understand it correctly. And so that's kind of my, what I'm trying to wrap my head around is if we're constantly goading people into doing stuff so that we can get greater market share, where does it all take us? I mean, if, if, if we have all these people that are assuming false identities to, um, you know, to go in computer networks and pretend they're someone they're not so that they can get someone to do something they shouldn't do. And we have the National Endowment for Democracy that in the name of promoting democracy is writing reports attacking China and Russia about using sharp power as opposed to our soft power, stuff like this. I'm just wondering where that all will lead and how that plays into our whole military industrial um, framework. Thanks, Michael. I think those are good questions too. Uh, they, they highlight something that I saw when I was in the State Department and I think has only amplified since. And that is that the CIA has become very sophisticated and other elements of government, but the CIA is usually the lead in using non-governmental organizations, quasi organizations, quay hogs we call them, um, and other similar entities instead of using their own troops, as it were. They use the NED, they use the IRI, they use all kinds of, even uh, Les Médecins Sans Frontières, the Doctors Without Borders. Um, they infiltrate them and they use them. And they've done this ever since Bill Donovan and Alan Dulles invented the concept, um, World War II and afterwards. But now they're doing it in a very sophisticated way and they're using national technical, technical means to help them and the social media and so forth. Well, let, me, let me reverse gears here and tell you something that I just found out that I'm quite sure is accurate. Um, you know that Donald Trump canceled the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. Well, those of us who knew something about Dominion Virginia Power uh, my utility, for example, in Virginia, and the second largest utility only exceeded by Duke Power on the Eastern Seaboard, lost a $12 billion investment in the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. Well, mm, how did they lose that? Under Donald Trump, how did they lose that? Well, it's increasingly clear that the GRU, which is the military intelligence unit that Putin controls in Moscow, the GRU so infected Virginia politics and so infected national politics and ultimately got their man in the White House, I think, to orchestrate its cancellation. Now, what did that do? Not only did it hurt Dominion to the point that they lost that 12 plus billion dollar investment and had to cut their dividend rate and their, you know, their stocks dropped a little and so forth, they had to retrench. They had to bring a lot of their tentacles in and, and so forth. Maybe not all that bad for a public utility, but let's look at this further. What would that have done to the Russian capacity to control Germany and through Germany, much of the rest of Europe because of their energy dependence on Gazprom? What would it have done to Nord Stream 2, for example, the latest effort to hook Germany? Well, it would have competed with it. 
it would have probably given the Europeans an alternative to just Russian energy. Um, this is what's going on in the world now. And anybody that doubts it is crazy. It is going on. All this to say that some of the things you're reporting, like signature reduction and so forth, are potentially positives in this struggle, because that is what it is. It's a struggle. My view is we won't fight any wars with tanks and battleships and so forth anymore, despite what Mike Sweeney said. Now, we may get into a conventional struggle the way Mike pointed out in that article over Taiwan or whatever. But I think the future for great powers or near great powers is taking down each other's systems. You're going to take down the distribution system for food, the distribution system for energy. They're going to take down for us our financial system. Imagine the havoc that would wreak. You put a country like us or like uh, China or Russia on its knees almost instantly. So some of this is positive in the sense that it's dealing with a negative that might be traumatic and even existential in terms of our society, our economy, and so forth. At the same time, and you have to maintain this balance inside government, it's one of the most difficult things you do on a daily basis. I see the NSA and others going well beyond what they were authorized to do by the Patriot Act and post 9-11 in general, and essentially spying on us all and collecting data on us all. And it's not just metadata, <laughs> it's everything. If, if, if their financial activities unit at NSA wants to take your bank account out and everything you own and everything you stand for financially, they could do it in a nanosecond and you wouldn't even know it was done. You'd be broke, busted, bankrupt, whatever you want to call it. And you wouldn't know it was done. You might not even have, a, have an identity left. You might have difficulty proving who you are, that you have a social security number, a passport or whatever. Not might, you would have. I watched us do some of this to the North Koreans. I watched us do some of this to others in the world too. Um, it's very, very difficult to be pleased with these developments in any way. But you do, I think, until we in reintroduce diplomacy and maybe work out some deals on these things, you do have to be cognizant that they're gonna do them to you. And you do have to develop means to combat it. 